Hallelujah. Our Father and our God, one more time, we want to say thank you. Thank you for the privilege of the 25th of February. The last recollection of the 25th of February that we had was in 2023. So that means that since 2023, 25th of February till today, you have been helping us. You have kept us. You have sustained us for a divine purpose. And today, Lord, we return all the glory unto you. As we gather today, oh God, the Bible says in Psalm 133, how beautiful is it for brethren to gather together in unity. Then he says that it's as the oil that runneth through the beard and even to the skirt of Aaron. It's as the dew of Haman. He says, and there God commanded his blessing. Father, as we have gathered today, we have not gathered unto self. We have gathered unto you. So the blessing that you say, that you command when we gather together, let that blessing be unto us in this service today in the mighty name of Jesus. Let everyone that has left home to come here today, Father, let them return with renewed and refreshed and enhanced and enlarged blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, honor your word and we ask of you that you anoint this voice of clay and use me for your glory alone. Let me not do of myself, but let me speak as your oracle sent unto your people in the mighty name of Jesus. You sent Peter to the house of Cornelius and mighty things happened. Peter said to Cornelius, I'm a man just like you, but I come by divine leading. And as I've come here, the glory of the Lord will resound. And of a truth, the power of the Most High God descended upon the house of Cornelius that day. Father, we are asking of you that Lord, upon today's service and every service that will be held in the assembly of Virtues Christian Center, let your glory descend in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, people of God. I want to share with you today from the story of David from 1 Samuel chapter 30. It's a month of enlightenment, uh, enlightenment of heart and divine direction. Am I correct? All right. I want to share with you from the story of David in 1 Samuel chapter 30. I know that our pastor, uh, our reverend is a man of the word and I am so convinced that and I can see it in the atmosphere and the people that I've met that by the grace of God they have been doing such an amazing work with you and that is why you have, you have the kind of expression that you have into the word of God and into worship. I am very observant. I've noticed that. So I want to share with you from the story of David. It's a story we know very well. It's a very, uh, you know, very kind of popular one from all the chapters of scripture as they, and the chapters of David. In 1 Samuel chapter 30 from verse 1 to the end, the Bible tells us that David and his men had gone to Ziglag. Had gone out of Ziglag and they have gone to battle as the Lord sent them. When they came back, scripture says the Amalekites had come and they had raided where they had left their wives and their children. When David and his men returned, scripture says they had taken them captives and taken them away. Whilst they were trying to grapple with what they, are, they, are, they were seeing, it was a shock for them. I mean, every man would desire to go home and come back and meet his family and rejoice with his family. And they came back that day, their family was no more. The men that were with David, they cried. They cried, they cried, they cried. In fact, scripture recalls that they cried so much to the level that they were not even able to cry again. Then the next thing that they started to do was that they proposed in their heart that they were going to stone David. Can you imagine? David that had been with them, that had journeyed with them, that they had journeyed together. But the time may come in life when the people that you think will, you know very well will begin to do otherwise. This man cried. And the next thing that David did was that David said to Abiata the priest, said, bring thither the ephod. Why? So that he will seek God and find out from God what to do. Find out from God what to do. And as he did that, the Bible says, and God spoke to him. In verse 7, 1 Samuel chapter 30, David said to Abiata the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiata brought hither the ephod to David. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue the, after this troop? 
shall I overtake them? And he answered, he said, pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail, you will recover all. Everything that you are seeking and you are looking for. There is absolutely nothing that you want, you are looking for, you are striving for, trying to understand that God does not know. He is the all-knowing God. Those men had come and they had gone. There was no physical way that David and his men could have known where they are. But they inquired, David inquired of the Lord and said, Lord, what should I do? I have been praying a prayer and we have been praying a prayer in, our, in, the, in the place where we congregate. That like never before, this year 2024, what you do not know, God will show it unto you. What you need to know, God will show it unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus. What you are looking for, you will find it. By the grace of God Almighty. Very profound chapter of scripture, people of God. One thing that we have tutored ourselves is that one injustice as a Christian that you must never do to yourself is that you must never, ever, ever be familiar with the word of God. Yes, never, ever be familiar with the word of God. We have tutored ourselves that and we live by it. So even if you can recite scripture, that as God has blessed us to have the ability to retain the scriptures, never be familiar with the, with the word of God. Is, is something that we have entrenched ourselves with and we have trained ourselves. So even if it's Psalm 23 that you know so well, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If that scripture be brought forth in Bible study or your meditation in the day, never be familiar with it. I've learned in all these decades of serving God that the scripture you think that you know before, I've learned that one singular word in the word of God can open up several insight unto you. From one verse of scripture, we can preach for a whole year. And you will not be tired. Such is the power that is inside this word. This word is not a storybook. This is the spirit of God. That is captured unto the understanding of men. Never be familiar with the word of God. Let me to encourage your neighbor. Never be familiar with the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. The first thing that I saw. In this story that I want to share with you today. With five things very quickly within the time that we have. Is that when David said to Abiata the priest to bring Tida the epot. Do you know what that means? What that means is that at the time that we need it the most. On a daily basis, we live by what we know. A man cannot excel beyond what you know. What you know where you are now is a function of what you know. What you are trying to understand is a function of what you are trying to get hold of. Every one of us, we are a product of what we know. We speak by what we know. We foster by what we know. We go by what we know. It's a function of what we, If Daddy did not know how to demand the epoch, the epoch was an emblem and a medium of seeking God in the days of old. So when we talk about enlightenment, enlightenment is getting to know something, knowing something. And that which you know, you are able to bring it to bear. To be enlightened about something is to, is to have come into understanding of something. So you are enlightened. So for example, I can give my device to doctor now and say, sir, please help me to check uh, the gallery. But because he's enlightened and he knows what to do, he will not struggle because he's enlightened. So David requested that he put be brought. I pray for you today. That the things that you have learned and the things that you know, like never before, may you begin to put it into operation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. David requested for the epoch because it was what he knew. It was what he knew. What you come to do in church, people of God, what you have been doing since you became a Christian, you gave your life to God, every scripture, every instruction, I saw, I was following the, the statement of faith earlier on. We also do the same. It is very important. All those things that you learn become an enlightenment unto you. So that when the enemy comes, like a flood, you're able to say, no, that's not for me. You will sleep and you will wake up. And then you'll be palpitating. No, you, have a, you are enlightened. 
you know what to do. No weapon fashioned against us will prosper in this house. And we, was, we said that because we are enlightened. People of God, the enemy watches us most times and he laughs. He laughs himself to scorn. Because God Almighty has enlightened us. We know what to do. He has told us, this is the book of life. This is my Bible here on this, on this tablet. Technology afforded it to be so. You know, we know what to do. We know what to do. And what we do is what we are meant to be applying. So the enlightenment that is being brought to us this month is to remind us that people of God, that scripture that you know, you should stand upon it and trust God for great and mighty things and not give up. Because enlightenment has come unto you. Glory, glory be to the almighty God. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, you know the story. Jehoshaphat was having a regular day as a king. All of a sudden, news came that five kings were coming to besiege Judah and Jerusalem. Five. I mean, that should make everybody to be afraid. What happened? The next thing Jehoshaphat did, said, let us call a fast. Let us pray unto God and ask the God of heaven that he will help us. And they prayed. And remember what happened? By the time that the word of God came, the word of God says, they should lead a profession of worship. And they begin to praise God. And as they were praising God, the five nations that came, remember what happened? God began to discomfit all of them. Every one of them were completely destroyed that day. They did not have to. God told them, you will not have to lift a finger. For this battle is unto the Lord. They entered into that realm because they were enlightened. They knew what to do. I pray for you people of God. That on a daily basis, you will not forget what you have learned. On a daily basis, you will apply what you have learned. In the name of Jesus. We should live by that, people of God, as believers. Live by what we have learned. What we have learned is such a treasure. Such a treasure. I make my boast in God. This faith has helped me tremendously. The word of God has transformed my life. I have enlightenment. I know. I know what to do by the grace of God. And the ones that I don't know, I know where to go to. I know how to plead unto him. Father, your word says, Isaiah 41, 10, you said you will hold me by hand. And you said you will help me. Father, where is your help? Enlightenment affords us that opportunity. And they tell you that, oh, this business will never, will not do well in this location. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Is the earth not the Lord and the fullness thereof? And the world and they that dwell therein? Ah, uh ah. -uh. Job 22 and 28 says you will decree a thing and it shall be established. Everyone that needs to come and patronize this business, let them be loose from wherever they are. They will come forth. Because you are enlightened and you know what to do. What we don't do most times is we don't flow in the things that we have learned. We don't flow in the things that we have learned. And so we it seemingly we go out there and it seems that we are ignorant. I've come to a level in my life, my brothers and my sisters. You are my brothers and my sisters, whether you like it or not. I've come to a level in life that I say to people that we should be the one teaching them in the world. It's not a boast. I've been around and I've been to different corridors all over the world. And I say, not pride. I look at what they are teaching in the world. I look at what uh, motivational speakers are saying. I say, there's nothing anybody can say to me. All of these things are in the world. Everything is in this world. Everything. By the, there's nothing anybody can tell. I watch the news and immediately I can see a parallel in scripture. I hear this, I read this, I say, hey, there's nothing that is out there. No, go to school, oh, people of God. Go to school, do your master's, pursue your PhD, be a doctor like doctor, read all the books. I thank God for your life. But by the grace of the almighty God, this word here, this word here is a lamp unto our feet. Is a light unto our path. Psalm 19, Psalm 119 says, it is better than silver and gold. Help me to tap your neighbor with the holy tap. Say, take hold of what you know. 
take hold of what you know. How do we then get enlightened? We get enlightened because of the things that has happened to us in the time of seeking God. When we seek God, enlightenment comes. Hallelujah. Luke 18 from verse 1. Jesus said men ought always to pray and not to faint. When we get into those mode, and when I heard people praying, I said, yes, it seems this is, my, this is a, a, a good place to be. Prayer is still prayer. It can never be old-fashioned. It can never be old syllabus. Forget everything that is happening around everybody doing their expression. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. But prayer is still prayer. And I want to encourage you by God. Whatever is being done in your church that you have planted it, let it, that be your principal embrace. I'm telling you, there is no other prayer. The prayer that pastor prays here suffices for you. Don't, don't, don't hustle it. Don't jump all over the place. Mm -mm. Wherever you are planted is where you will flourish. Alright? Wherever you are planted is where you will flourish. Believe the Lord. Believe the Lord. Believe the God. Believe God you shall be established. Believe his prophet and you will prosper. Second Chronicles 20, 20. I said to people, what are you jumping all over the place for? Eh, you are on this platform. You are on this platform. It's lack of enlightenment. It's lack of enlightenment. This is happening, you are there. This is happening, you are there. Eh, someone will say, ah, we, know, we don't know where God will move. God is already moving. It's you that do not know. God has already moved. It's you that you not know. Whether it be our sister that comes up here to lead prayer, God will move. And pitch your tent there. James encouraged me years ago when I was a, 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 a young believer. James said, Chris, listen, it's in the Bible from James, James 1 and from 7. He said, a true, a double-minded man should not believe you will receive anything from the Lord. Mm -mm. So if you think that oh, the prayer that we are praying today is not enough, and then you go and jump, mm -mm. a, a double-minded person should not believe you will receive anything from the Lord. Uh -uh. Believe that everything that is said in the place where you are planted shall be done. Yes, sir. It is in the Bible. First John 5, 14 to 15. This is the confidence that we have in God. Whatever we ask of him in his name according to his will, we know we have received the petitions of our heart. So why am I jumping all over the place? I don't bother myself. This is happening. Mm, I pitch my tent. Hallelujah. And I trust God. Yes, sir. And God moves. God moves. This day you are here. Hey, you are there. You are there. There is fire in that place. Which fire? Which fire? It's ignorance. And so oh, things are happening there. You know why? As I concluded, Doc, wherever you say anything is happening, you know why? People are receiving it and they open their heart that it will work. And that's why. If you open your heart any other place, it will also work. So there is no strange move anywhere. This is happening. Mm. It's because people have become gullible and they believe it will work and it works. It's as simple as that. Hallelujah. There is power in this assembly. The Lord is moving here. Great things are happening. Your needs are being met. God is enlarging your coast. You are getting the best of the best. God is prospering you on every side. In the name of Jesus. You are being enlarged. Your business is doing well. Your career is blossoming. Your home is blessed. Your needs are met. God is meeting you at the point of your need. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't let anybody deceive you. We have passed the level of being deceived. So anybody calls and says, ah, Sister, hey, there's something happening and all that. Mm -mm. Sir, when we were young in, in the faith, our friends were going to a particular place that the same things were happening there. And they say, ah, Chris, and I'll be, come this on you. I said, Ned, don't bother inviting me to any place where I am in service. And that time I've joined the workers. And you now tell me to come in the place on a Sunday? No. I will come and visit you after church. But in this place we have chosen to be planted is where I will be. When Zechariah came to tell, when Gabriel, rather, came to tell Zechariah that your wife Elizabeth, even though they were both old, will have a child. Where did Gabriel Angel Gabriel means Zechariah. The old man was burning incense in the tabernacle. He wasn't outside, he wasn't there all over. No, he was there burning incense. That was the place where Gabriel gave him the message. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give birth. Whatever you are believing God for, in the mighty name of Jesus, 
the God of heaven that Gabriel said, the power of the highest will come upon you. I pray in the name of Jesus, the power of the highest will come upon you. And God will deliver unto you that thing that you have been looking for. In the mighty name of Jesus, your testimony shall be loud. In the name of Jesus, ears of men will hear and they will twinkle. Hallelujah. I told you I want to feel at home. Is that okay? Please be seated. <laughs> uh, God will have to help us today. I'm on, I'm on page 5 and my note is 57 pages. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. When we seek God, we become enlightened. Never forget that. In Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 3 to 5. What did Nehemiah do? He was going about, he had a good job. He was a butler to the king Ahitaros in Shushan. Then he was told that the, he met some guys that came from Jerusalem. If you remember the story. And they told him that the wall of Jerusalem was burned down with fire. Jeremiah was moved. Ah, what happened? Because then he was already sorted out. It's just like someone living, grew up in Benin. Came to Lagos to hustle. And then saw people that came from Benin. And they told him that ah, things are not well over there. He was moved. And he said, really? And the next thing that happened, the whole chapter of Nehemiah chapter 1, the Bible says, Nehemiah says, and I fasted, and I prayed, and I sought the face of the God of Israel. Why did he do that? It's because he was enlightened. He knew what to do, how to seek God, that this thing is bothering me. How do I respond to it? Now I'm okay, I'm sorted. I mean, you can imagine the job of the cup bearer. That means anything that the king would drink the way he was in the old days of old, he would be the one that would first taste that wine. He had a good job. He didn't need to bother about what was happening in his land of nativity. But he prayed. He sought God because of enlightenment. And then he had the birth of the vision to go and build that wall of Jerusalem. And the next was blessings. When you plug into divine enlightenment, the hand will be divine blessings. From today like never before. Don't be ignorant of plugging into what you know. You may know just one scripture. You may know two. You may know three. Just believe the Lord your God and you shall be established. That is the move. There is no other, there is no other thing. Every other thing we do in Christianity is good. I mean, we touch on this. We preach on this. We touch on that. We, pre uh, we preach on that. But the cardinal thing is to just hold on to God. I'm telling you, any other person that you are going to go and subscribe to and you follow and you do all that, you know what they've done to themselves? They've chosen to believe God. That's what they've done. They've not done any other thing extraordinary. They just chose to believe God. So if you and I too can believe God, great and mighty things will begin to happen in our lives. Hallelujah. What happened to Daniel in Daniel chapter 2? Daniel and his friend, they prayed. They sought God because they knew the God of Israel before they came to Babylon. They were enlightened. They didn't allow to be faced by what was happening in the land. Several things are happening in our country right now. Things are challenging. But how do we respond as Christians? How do we respond as Christians? We have, tra we have trained ourselves as Christians not to speak the language of the world. Things are challenging, yes. But how do we respond? How do we respond? There's a language of every moment. You must be careful not to speak the way that other people are speaking. Yes, things may be challenging, but we choose to speak otherwise. Because the Bible says, the words that I speak out of my mouth, Jesus told his disciples in John 6, 63, he said, the words that I speak unto you, they are, it is spirit and it is life. That's the word that I speak. Solomon said in uh, Proverbs 13, 25, that word has completely changed my life. He said a man will have joy by the words of his mouth. The words that I speak. The word, the, a man will have joy by the words of his mouth. When I came across that scripture, even though I began to, I built up myself in the understanding that I'm very careful of what I say. Very careful. If I don't have anything to say, I keep quiet. I, don't, I keep quiet. You know, over there where we live can be very cold. You know? And so you go to work then and your typical uh, English person, I mean, 
negativity is always bring out. Oh, it's a terrible day. It's a me. Ah, I will always respond. I said, this is a good day. And they will say, Chris, how can you say this is a good day? It's gloomy outside. It's wet. It's snowing. I said, this is a good day. Why? Because I know it is the day that the Lord has made. How can it be a terrible day? It's a good day. So that every place where I walk, they will give me a strange nickname. Mr. Positive. I say, I receive it. It's not a terrible day. It's a good day. And I'm able to say that because I know who the Lord is. I know who created the day. That's what we should do. Oh, things are difficult. Don't nobody's buying market. Don't follow them to say it. Because your words is seed. The words, they say in my native language, they say that their words is like egg. Once it drops, can you pack the egg again? What is powerful? If this is all you receive today, then I'm good. Be careful what you say. Say to yourself, today is a good day. God will make a way where there is no way. In the name of Jesus. This is the God that we serve. You know, no matter how much we read Genesis 26, sir, we can never grapple with it. I said to people, I've been teaching a lot about it in church these days, that as God gives us understanding of the scriptures, I've now come with a, a perspective. I, I ask my people that we read all these stories in the Bible, but nobody told us how did Isaac deal with the instruction that God gave him. When God told him that, don't go to Gera, uh, don't go to Egypt, stay in Gera. Everybody was moving to Egypt. So, picture with me now that Isaac had friends, you know, doctor is my friend and all that. And doctor says, bros, me, I'm going to Egypt. Though. Nothing is happening here in Gera. And I say, sir, God said that you stay in Gera. Doctor will say that, ah, Chris, you're a wicked man. Look at your children. There's nothing. There's famine in the land. The Bible doesn't give us that. Reading. How did Isaac deal with what people were saying when everybody was going to Egypt and he stayed? How do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? That even his wife will say, sir, when did God speak to you? It is you God spoke to. When did God speak to you? Was it at night or when? We, we turn. Nothing is happening in this land. There is famine in the land. Yet, your children are here. They are crying and you are telling us that God spoke to you. God said we should stay. But the Bible says in the same year, in that same year, God Almighty caused Isaac God increased him a hundredfold. So my question is this, sir. What did Isaac plant in a land that is famine? What did Isaac plant? Can you plant in a land? You know what famine means? That means there is no rain. So how can a seed grow in the land of famine? And the Bible said God gave him in the same year a hundredfold. In the same year. How? Obedience to God. Being enlightened and saying, whatever God has said, let's hold on to it. It can be a lonely place. So, things are difficult now and you are still holding on to God. It can be a lonely place. People will be saying to you that, don't you know what is happening? Things are difficult, things are tight. It can be a lonely place and you are saying to them, I believe that God will move. I believe that God is a good God. The brother that came to pick me up in the airport, I flew from Abijah yesterday. When he came to pick me up and was saying that, ah, pastor, yeah, things have been difficult, but we believe God. I was so excited by what he was saying. I said, that is the language. I said, sir, I've even be I even believe that ah, it is even when it is most difficult that God moves. Yes. I wanted to hug him from the staring. I said, yes. When it seems that it's so difficult, it's when God moves. It's when God moves. When those guys were crying, in the scripture we were looking at, 1 Samuel 30, they were crying. Was that not the time that God spoke to David? Yes, Said David, pursue. But sir, we don't know where they are. Pursue them. Where are we going to find them? You will overtake. Without fail, you will recover all. What sense does that make? We don't know when they came. We don't know how far they have gone. There's no sat nav. There's no drone. How are we going to locate them? God said, pursue them. Where to? You will overtake. But let us even find them first before we think about overtaking. Then God said, You will, re without fail, you will recover all. Oh, yeah. Sir, if I'm to jump to the end of this story, by the time you know the story, sir, by the time David caught up with this man, 
Not only did they recover their wives and their children, the spoil that they got, they packed so much spoil that the Bible says 12, 12 provinces. David was sending gifts to people. Say, so go and give this one this. Go and give this one. He was sending gifts. Things they did not have before, they had it. Because they simply believed God and trusted God. Look, I mean, one minute we have. Please be seated. <laughs> Please be seated. The first thing, the first thing, Sarah and Mother, you need to do and understand is that you must seek God. And you seek God out of your prayer. You seek God out of the things that you've known in God and known about God. You put that into practice. That is what you do. That is enlightenment. I brought the enlightenment out of that. So if you are to give this, I don't know if the multimedia is recording it. The title I just given it, Pursue, Overtake, and Recover All. The next thing that we need to be doing is that you need to be active. You need to put action into the things that you are doing. After you have received, after we have prayed, you must activate those things with action. With action. Activate it with action. You don't, get a, you don't have a job, don't sit at home. Go out. Be prayer working. I've done it several times. In places where I was trusting, I would just go to central London and just be prayer working. Say, Lord, in one of these places, I'm going to walk. God will help me. God will move. The day that it happened, it happened. The place where I was doing a work that I didn't like. I used to tell those guys, guys, me, I will be leaving you soon. Say, this guy has come again. This, we are doing this media work. We are packing sugar together. We will pack, we will pack it on. To, say, me, nah. Say, my days are numbered here. I will leave soon. What was I doing? Activating what I know. Acting it out. Write to some place. I said, can I come and volunteer? Oh, we don't have the cash. Can I come and volunteer? But we are not going to pay. Yes, that's fine. Action. Action. You want to start a business? If I ask you now, how much do you need? I don't know. And you don't want to start a business? No. Write your plan. Write the name of the business. How much are you going to need to make it happen? Where do you want to locate it? Who are going to be your niche? The people that are going to be patronizing you. Have a book where you write it down. When God asked Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 3, what do you want? Solomon said, Lord, can I come back tomorrow and tell you, sir? No. He said that you will give me wisdom. You will show me the difference between evil and good. That is the man that was ready. If God asks you now, what do you want? You'll be surprised that many of us will be saying, mm. have a vision book. Have your prayer book and have your plans book. Have those things. That's what we use in church now. And we had a prayer meeting online this morning. We had our vision book, our prayer book, and we are praying in the Holy Ghost for an hour. Write, down, write them down. Write the things that you want from God. Write the things that you don't want. Have a, have a booklet. Maybe I didn't bring it. A little, a little booklet. Have it and write it down. What did God tell Habakkuk? I got chapter 2 from 2 to 3. Write the vision down. Make it plain. So that he that read it will run with it. Don't just have it in your head. Write it down. God did not just verbally tell them the Ten Commandments, even if it's in the Old Testament. He wrote it with his own finger. He wrote it down for them. So don't just carry fancy back. Write a little book. So that the time that you are free, go over those visions. Be reading them. Prayer walk with them. God will enlarge my course. This is my year of much more. God will do it for me. In the name of Jesus. God will meet me at the point of my need. Write those things down. Write them down. Touch your neighbor and ask that, where is your vision book? I know you have plans. You have lofty ideas. You have great... Write them down. Write them down. Hallelujah. Are we still together? Yes, Are we still friends? Yes, All right. So the next point is what? Action. Isn't it? After we have sought God, then we do what? Back it up with action. When they left Egypt, God brought them out of Egypt. Remember? And Moses took them onto the way that God had led them. They got to the Red Sea. And when they got there, they saw the Red Sea. 
The people started to murmur. You should have left us in Egypt to die. Is there no graves in Egypt and you brought us out in the open? Where are we going to go? Moses went to God. And God told him, I disturb him. Tell my people to go forward. Go forward where? With due respect, sir. Go forward where? Sorry, sir, but, but sir, which forward? Which forward? You know you get to a place in life and you, you wonder, when was the last time you laughed at yourself? You, you say you are trusting God and you look at yourself and say, eh, hey, you, are, you are trusting God. Which God? Which God? God told the people, go forward. I can guarantee you all those millions of people, they can't swim. They were slaves. None of them had ever been to any swimming pool. So when you see water, the next thing you may think about is go on a canoe or a boat or a ship. And if all of that is not available, maybe we will swim. There was no canoe at sight. There was no boat. There was no ship. So the next thing may be, maybe we should swim. There were children there and even the adult. They can't swim. So it was a valid question to ask. Go where? Go where? But God said, go forward. The moment they come down and they began to go forward, the Bible says God sent a wind, the east wind, and blew apart a sea and casted it thither and thither. And the people walked on dry ground. So tell me, tell me something else now. In this season that we are, if God needs to send the east wind so that you will go forward in this land, he will send it. The same God that told Elijah, I'm done in this brook charity. There's no more, ravens are no longer bringing fish and bringing bread. Say, so go to Zarephath. I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. There's nothing God cannot command. And so I know what I'm talking about. There's nothing God has not command. We are the ones that are not activating and in a, the enlightenment that we know. God said, I've commanded a widow there to sustain you. Elijah took action. The moment he got to Zarephat, what did he see? He saw a woman that said that was preparing to die. The little she had, she said, me and my daughter, son, daughter will, son will eat this and we are going to die. What did Elijah do? Naturally, any man that has a little bit of emotions will say, then this is not the woman God sent me to. It would be wicked of me, insensitive of me to demand this of uh, this woman. The woman I just said, the little we have, Myself and my son. We just want to eat it. And then, that is it. Elijah said, no. Go and prepare me one first. The flour will never cease. And the oil will not wax thin. What did God do? It came to pass. If Elijah had not activated what God said, the woman would never have received that miracle. So you are my time now. Let me give you one more, then we'll move to the next point. In 2 Kings and chapter 2, sir, Elijah was about to be taken up by God. You remember the story? And he told Elisha, God has sent me on to Bethel. You wait here. Elijah said, wait where? Wherever you go, we are going to go. The moment Elisha was going with Elijah, 50 sons of the prophet, 50 people, said to one man, don't you know that your master will be taken away from you today? Elisha said, I know. Hold your peace. Sir, read your Bible. Elijah never told Elisha that God was going to take him. He did not know. So naturally, Elisha should have been offended. I've been serving this man. I left my father and my mother. I left the family business. First Kings 19. And I followed him. 
So God was going to take him and he's not telling me anything. Can I just digress for one minute and speak to the workers here? When you are working, as you are working with pastor and pastor missus, there are many things that you may not understand. Don't be offended. Don't let offense come into the picture at all. What you don't know, rather ask. Elisha could have said, but this man didn't tell me anything. We are human beings now, are we not? How can this man be living? And he didn't mention anything. This is wickedness. I left the family. If you remember 1 Kings 19, read it. Elisha was plowing the yoke of oxen. He left it and he ran after Elijah. When Elijah told him that he should follow him. And the man was living, he didn't see anything. They got, they left Bethel and then they got to Jericho. They came again and they told Elijah, Elisha, your master is going to be taken away from you today. Think about it like I was saying earlier on. When 50 people say something, natural psychology would dictate that you listen to what they are saying. Elisha did not listen. He continued to follow Elijah. He took action, followed Elijah. When they got to Jordan was when Elijah now told Elisha, the Lord will be taking me away today. Can you imagine if Elisha had been listened and been offended in battle, he would have missed it. Don't listen to what everybody say. Our paths are different. We were born on different days. Even if we are identical twins, we are different. Don't listen to what everybody is saying. If David had listened to Eliab, Goliath would not have been killed. His brown brother told him, what are you doing here? And a small boy, daddy just told you to come and deliver cakes. We have delivered the cake. Go back. David says, there is a cause. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that has come to defy the armies of the living God? He didn't listen to his own brother. He asked again, what shall be done to the man that fights this Goliath? They took him to Saul. Saul told him, you are but a small boy. This man is a man of war. Before you were born, he had been doing battle. David said, eh. mm -mm. I kept my father's flock. And one day the lion and the bear came and took it. And I went after and smote them. The same God, the same God that helped me then, he would help me before this Philistine. That same day, David held the head of Goliath, the giant of the Philistines. This year, in the name of Jesus, in the name that is above every name, I declare and I deliver unto you the grace to carry the head of your Goliath. In the name of Jesus, the grace to run through a troop and to leap over walls. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the same place where they are saying, Can anything happen in Lagos, Nigeria? God will enlarge your course, God will give you your own. Vision. God will show you what to do. In the mighty name of Jesus. It will bring water out of rock for you. It, it will open the heavens. And load you with benefit. In the name of Jesus. That is it my brothers and sisters. Please be seated because of time. The next thing I wanted to share with you about. I'll just, maybe I'll just mention them point by point. And then we are done. The next thing is faith. Faith is so important. Seek God, take action. Remember, faith is the cardinal of our Christianity. When God told David to go forth and he was going, the next thing that happened was that the Bible says they got to a place called Brookbisa. He went with 400 men. When they got there, some men were not able to go. Again, they were tired. The Bible says they could not go further. The question you should ask is, their own wives and children were also there. But they couldn't go forward. They were tired. That could have been a distraction for David. But they continue to go. They continue to go. Before faith, rather, be mindful of distraction. Put that into your notes. So the first one is seeking God. The second one is that you must take action. The third one, avoid every form of distraction. Be careful not to be distracted. Nehemiah chapter 4 from verse 1 to 6 Nehemiah did not allow Sambalat and Tobias to distract him. They were not there when he was praying in Nehemiah chapter 1. 
They were not there when he received the vision to go and build the world of Jerusalem. They were not there when he came and encouraged the people, let us build this wall. They came from nowhere and began to say, even what they are building, if the fox fall upon it, it will crumble. Come, let us have a meeting. The man said, I discern these people want to distract us. We are doing a great work here. Don't be distracted. Be telling yourself that you are great in the land of the living. Tell yourself you are a child of God. Tell yourself you are going somewhere. Be not be distracted. Somebody has gone ahead and done something and clap for them and celebrate them. Don't be distracted by that. Avoid distraction. Avoid it, avoid it, avoid it. Luke chapter 4 verse 1 to 4. Uh, Matthew chapter 4 from verse 1 to 10. Remember Jesus with, this, with Satan came to tempt him three times. Jesus was not distracted. He kept focused. The three temptations. He kept on speaking. Man shall not live by bread alone. He will cast. He will. He will sustain me. When I cast myself down, he will keep charge over me. He was not distracted. Be careful, Sarah and Ma, not to be distracted. Be very mindful of that. You should not be distracted. And the fourth one. Remember, faith is the anchor of Christianity. Daniel chapter three, verse eight to thirty. SMA. We call them Sambalat, uh, Meshach, and Abednego. They exhibited faith. They were thrown into the burning fairy furnace, but they said that the God that we serve, he will keep us. Faith is very important. Like never before, hold on to your faith. Hold on to your faith in God. People that have faith in God, they believe God to the end. They trust him to the end. And they see supernatural things happen in their lives. Hallelujah. Am I good, sir? My time is good? All right. Let's rise up to our feet. just so many things in my spirit I've caught it short in righteousness people of God if you hold on to these things it will work for you wherever you are and wherever you are seek God you must pursue action know what you want to do I've told you again I've given you another nugget of life write things down carry those things with you everywhere you go let that be the focus of your prayer many people will ask for example how can I pray for one hour it's because you haven't written things down by the time you write down, you pray for your if you have a child, you pray for this if you don't have a child, you pray for your siblings, you pray for the nation, before you know it, one hour is gone when you have a focus, you plug into that focus you begin to write things down, every single day if you have something that you are dealing with, write it down let it become a prayer, let it become a praise hallelujah then finally know that uh, you must hold on to God. Hold on to his word. As they were going, when they left Budbisosa, what happened then? The Bible says that around about the verse 8, they saw one Egyptian guy. They didn't know where they were going. One Egyptian guy had been left by those that came to burn down Ziglag. They left him there. He was the one that took them to where their enemies were. When you follow God and you hold on to faith, there's something God has laid down for you. There's something that God has laid down ahead of you. In our church, is our year of visible difference. That's the word that God gave us. From John and chapter 9, verse 1 to 25. Loaded. That blind man, the disciples of Jesus, when they saw him, they said, who sinned? Is it this man or his parents? Jesus says, no. None of them. He said, but for the glory of the Lord to be made manifest, I must walk the walk of him that sent me when it is day. For night coming that no man will walk. The Bible said, he spat on the floor, made a spittle, and put on the face of that man. Told that man go and wash in the pool of Siloam, a blind man. So when he was going, people will have seen him. Where are you going? One man said I should go and wash. Wash where? Wash where? Go and sit down, my bros. He went. As he went, his miracle was waiting for him. That same day, a man that has never seen him before. The Bible says he was born blind. He came back seeing him. His eyes were restored. Because he held on to God. And held on. And went all the way. The servant of Naaman told him. When Elisha said go and wash in Jordan. And this leprosy will go. Elisha said Is there not, are there no better waters in other places? The servant told him. If the man of God had said go and wash. You better go and wash. Oh. He dipped himself in Jordan. And he came back out divine directions and his skin became like the skin of a baby this year 
I pray for you, my brother, my sister, that in the name of the one that is beyond all, God will do much more in your life. There shall be a visible difference in your destiny. The people that know you before will see you and they will see the hand of God. They will see the glory of God. They will see the power of God. They will see the fullness of God. They will see the mercy of God. They will see the help of God. This year your story will change. This year the Lord will lift you up from the mighty clay. In the name of Jesus. Where they have rubbish you, they are about to celebrate you. When they have concluded on you, they are about to begin to see you in a new light. It shall be before. This was where I am, but now this is it. Your joy shall be full. Your head shall be lifted. You will come back to give a testimony. The Lord will help you. You will locate your own allocation. In the mighty name of Jesus. It's the dawn of a new day. 